Hey. Yeah. An in-person gathering would be super fun. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like I would be really nerdy and fangirly about the yeah. whole situation. <laughs> be really cool so and then we just have to figure out like do we do it in a place where we've got lots of prospects or a place like just easy to travel to but like hawaii (laughs) hawaii would be perfect (laughs) could do cali florida hey sam (laughs) hello Hello, Mr. Sam. Hello, Mr. Mark. Hello, Ms. Addie. Hey. He says we stepped away for a minute. Bye, (laughs) y'all. How's it going, Sam? Oh, okay. I've got some sick kids today, so I'll probably be here incognito and uh, with video and uh, audio off. But uh, I'm I'm here. Yeah. Lurk in the shadows or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Sick kids are no fun. Yeah. Yeah. The um, search bar thingy. Um, if that could become like optional, that'd be amazing. Like, I think what allowing- we'll do is just, yeah, always show it or always show it in most cases. So, um, cool. Well, I'll probably I'll probably delete the image of the library so that, um, or at least in the mobile, turn it off so it doesn't show in the mobile view to save screen real estate. Yeah. Home office here. How's it going, Eddie? Good. Are you going to be my partner this week? Is it this week or next week? No, next week. Today's already Thursday. <laughs> next week. Yeah. For the open, the live. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about all sorts of Aspen goodness. Which is easy to do. Great. Yeah. Thanks for participating in that. It should be really good. We're excited. Yeah, happy to do it. To see what kind of a crowd it generates and whether it's mostly an internal or external audience or whatever. We'll have to outnumber Koha people. Give everyone a couple minutes to trickle in here. Hope everyone's day is going well. All week I thought it was like Wednesday and then now it's Thursday. I think it's Tuesday, so I don't know. I'm all kinds of messed up. (laughs) That was the frozen beach by your house. You said the frozen beach? Yeah. So it's probably, so I know I said it's really cold, but for you, it's probably not cold at all. (laughs) It's been like in the forties and I'm miserable. Um, But I will say in my defense that since we are on an island, the forties are much colder here. (laughs) Like the water, the the winds that come off the water are very harsh. (laughs) I'm about to uh, post Christopher's job since he moved and I'm thinking of like putting in it who you are. You like to go outside and seeing into the unknown and let it go and build ice castles and the cold doesn't bother you anyway. You, know. <laughs> you should. I've got 
some people trickling in. So um, we can just slowly get started. Um, I recognize most everyone in here, um, but for anyone that is new, my name's Addie Van Salisbury. Um, I am the implementer on the Aspen team. We have a couple of other members from Bywater. Um, for those of y'all that have been coming for the past couple months, I think we've decided to kind of skip introductions. Um, if anyone's new here, please feel free to go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, as we're discussing, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, we just don't want to take up too much of our precious time that we have together since we have some beautiful topics to cover. Um, so I'll just go around and um, speak to the Bywater crew that's here. We have Emily, our Aspen um, educator. Uh, we have Cal, who is our outreach lovely woman that shares all of our things on social media, make sure we know, know what we need to be doing. <laughs> um, and then we have Mark, of course, our developer. Um, I think that's everyone on the Bywater side. So if anyone wants to introduce themselves, I think everyone's come to at least one, but go ahead. Um, if not, we can go ahead and start the discussion. Um, so let's see. Our first topic today, our new business is to talk about shared repositories and if we want them, how we want to achieve them, specifically, perhaps, for placards, collection spotlights, browse categories, and grouped works. So would y'all find those useful? Yes, I think so. I think we would. Also translations. Yes. Yes. That would be really great. So when we talk about doing that, so the complications I have, like putting a repository up that we could put all of the, uh, the translation, let's use translations to start with because I think it's the most complex. So we could put a repository up that has all of the translations. The problem in my mind is people have been using the translation functionality to do local English translations. So like simplest example is some people say it's freeze and thaw holds and some people say suspend and resume or unsuspend. Um, how would we see things working for like the local translations? Um, the I mean, one idea would be just to uh, run it across, you know, at the point at which your translation packet is generated, right? So, you know, you would then do some kind of comparison against the code base to get what all the default um, phrases are. And, you know, if it varies from that, then it gets a flag of this is a local, you know, this is a local variant. And so then, you know, for Nashville, for example, like, uh, you know, we um, like our materials requests are called purchase suggestions. Uh, and the Spanish translation is, for, uh, is more about purchase suggestions than it is about materials requests. Right. And so, you know, both of those end up getting flagged on this is a local translation. Okay, so in the kind of the translation dialogue, we could have a so right now we bring it up and we say hey what what translation value do you want or here's the english version here's the value you want to change it to we could have a keep this locally kind of thing or uh so like a checkbox that says this is a local translation or don't you share at the point of general at the point that the local translation is created yeah, or would, would we just be wanting to pull translations and say, hey, here's the 20 new things that have been translated since you last checked for shared yeah. translations? Yeah, I think it's good, more like a Git workflow like that makes sense to me. And one in which um, the local variance from whatever the current default is, is noted. Okay. Um, so then when you supply, 
so say we're translating freeze hold uh -huh. when you supply a translation to the repository we could then provide basically if if we have a list of different translations for freeze hold in a variety of languages we could say here are some suggested translations um, just like you could get one out of Google Translate. So Google Translate would translate freeze holds as whatever it is. Um, then we could say, okay, here's three different possible translations for freeze hold. Pick the one you want to store locally. Um, and it would just be a, like an additional option. Yeah, an additional yeah. option in, in addition to the blank input box. Yeah. And then uh, would you have an option to not send your translation to the repository? Like I know we have a bunch of translations that are that include stuff like local policies along with right. the actual text. So they probably wouldn't be appropriate for anyone else. I mean, not that we would mind sharing them, but would there be an option to, to not have your translation sent up to the repository? Yeah, I think that would make sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, there's also in the database in the table, but I don't know if it's available in the interface is the like this needs review. Doesn't that exist? Yeah. And so like, you know, so, you know, I currently work with two Spanish speaking staffers on the Nashville Spanish interface translation. And a lot of times they're both just like, eh, that's good enough for now. <laughs> uh, but something that they could flag as, you know, hey, you know, for the larger community, don't really trust this one. Yeah. So are we okay. envisioning that it would like be pulled from Aspen itself, not somewhere that we would have to manually put these translations? So I think in the best world, you know, that's the most convenient thing is you would have a repository, Aspen would talk on the back end to that repository and Aspen would supply the, you know, the user interface um, for doing all the magical repository things. Yeah. And then we could seed that with Google Translate or whatever translation service, or if a library is buying translations for like a Korean translation, we could seed that repository and then everybody could have access to it. I have a question about doing the translations. I've only ever done English to English translations and just you know, customizing the language for our installation. Is there a comprehensive way to see all of the terms in one place or like export it to a spreadsheet or something like that in case we want to consult with other people who aren't in the um, Aspen admin context? Yes, you can export. Uh, there's two different options, export all translations or something, um, and that will give you a Excel file. Um, I'll throw in the comments our, our link. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, I just haven't, haven't really explored that yet. Yeah. But I got to say that, you know, the use of translation mode in context is um, really beneficial, especially like in Nashville, working with volunteer um, who are, you know, volunteers who are not like enmeshed in library land. And, you know, when you see freeze, oh yeah, okay, freeze, I can translate the word freeze. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the idea of, well, even more particular is the idea of the hold. And, you know, so just seeing, seeing it in context and translating in context is a, is a, a huge boon. And the easy way that um, Aspen makes that available is thumbs up, yay. Sure. Yeah, I agree, but definitely for sure. I was just thinking um, from the other standpoint, like doing everything one at a time is really kind of cumbersome. And then you don't really know necessarily which ones you've done and which ones you haven't done. Yeah, and there's also the view, um, you know, in the, you know, and you can give somebody um, just translation uh, permissions. And so then they can go to the, uh, you know, translations, I don't know what to call it, the properties page, but, you know, and you would see like all of the unfinished translations. Um, uh, you can, you know, make that happen. 
and so you can kind of do a more you know knock many out in the same place you know, so I've done this before for like uh, our English to English translations for, like I mentioned earlier, we don't call them materials requests, we call them purchase suggestions. So I just do a little search for materials in that translations admin page, and it brings up, you know, several terms and make and ensure that they are all appropriately translated to purchase suggestions. Yeah, I've done things like that. That's a good approach. Would y'all have the same... Um, or like the, or the same thoughts around the other shared repositories? Placards? Yeah, that's, a, that's a good model. Like, you know, contribute your local code to the group and then have the option to pull in whatever anyone else has contributed, something like that. Like, that seems like a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to see, you know, some simple little, you know, like a little pop out link, you know, to show me to that other customer's site and to see the thing in, 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 you know, in context. And, and if that could go out and display the English translation, if you're going through foreign terms, you could check what the English translation that the library was using. Um, that would alert you that it had changed. Yeah. So I think that makes sense. Yeah. So you can see the original values too. Um, and we were talking placards. So translations, placards, spotlights. What, what all had we? <laughs> I'm trying to remember the full uh, scope. Group, grouped works, was that one of them? Right. Manual groupings. Browse categories was mentioned. Yes, 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 and yes would be my <laughs> answers. Um, so with something like a placard or a spotlight or a browse category, I think my concern on that would be, do we get too many variations? So like if I create a, um, uh, with Liz, sorry lists be a good one as well to say i know like arlington has some really cool lists for like read alikes is that something people would want to be able to share as well share everything <laughs> <laughs> always share everything all the time um so say we're creating a read alike for one one title um my concern would be if we push that out to 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 different libraries, how many libraries would take that? If you modify it and want to suggest something, suggest a change, do we have like different derivations of like, hey, here's related or see more books like Harry Potter and there's than 20 different versions of that. Um, it, is it valuable to like group them according to topic or something or? Maybe. Um, I kind of see like whatever one was the first one in the door, that's the one I'm likely to, to download and use. And then if I want to tweak it, modify it from there, I, I would, but I wouldn't necessarily submit whatever I did back to the repository. And would you care if the original got updated independently of your changes? In my case, no, but I, I realize others would disagree. Yeah, I think your use case is probably the most similar to how we would probably do it, like just as an example or a template to start with, and then we would make our own local customizations. And I doubt we would be concerned with how it deviated once we brought in a local version of it. The other thing that I could think of, and I'm not sure how this would work, is if, <clears throat> if I'm an Aspen library and I happen to be browsing another Aspen library's uh, catalog like uh, Santa Fe, Welcome Santa Fe, um, and I saw that they did something awesome and I just wanted to borrow that, take that, it, it, maybe there's a way to like let that happen almost without a central repository, but 
it, it kind of worked in a way like the Z3950 concept, just an updated version of that. I have no idea how that could work, but. And so I was thinking the same thing, Sam, that if I could have something that would be, you know, that maybe it would look like the translation mode where, you know, if I go to Arlington site, then, you know, I have a bunch of extra little widgets that I could select and say, I want to grab this thing. Um, one of the things that we've floated around in the past is it, it was in the context of, of updating your own browse categories or widgets, but basically to be able to say, instead of creating a whole new search terms and that kind of thing, just update it from a URL so that you can say, I have an existing list widget. I have a new search that I want to do. So, uh, maybe I'm doing a search for teen fiction and I want to add um, some additional subjects or something to it rather than rebuilding it once it's already created, just say, here's the URL of my search, plug that in and update my, my browse category or something. We could potentially do the same kind of thing from a different site. So we could say, hey, update my browse category with Santa Fe's search results. Um, and it would obviously have different results because we all have different catalogs, but it would be the, a pretty easy interface. Um, Is this something that we should like build out the structure where everything's gonna live first and then I don't have yeah. any concept of where these things would go. <laughs> uh, we're going to have some sort of a Google Cloud server someplace. <laughs> um, so yeah. Would that be on our end or? Yeah, I think so. We could build out a server that would either have an interface or not. Um, it might just be a database. So. Um, I, I throw all my mark records in there for anyone to take too. Universal catalog is a whole different topic. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to think about, but let's start with sharing our, our some of the metadata or some of the categories. <laughs> um, and what other concerns would people have with it for like, do we need to worry about like attribution to say like, hey, here's recommended reading for this title as originally created by Arlington or as originally created by Swan or. Um... I think that could confuse our patrons. I think it'd be great if the staff knew where that came from but my patrons sometimes can't even figure out how to click on the search box that's right there. <laughs> Literally right here. Oh, okay. No, I think like at least on our implementation of lists, we tend to go with a more like a generic anonymous. I think we just attribute all our lists to a librarian. So even though multiple librarians have their own card that they use to make them, they all use the same kind of generic front name for the public display. So we're kind of like not looking to, to attribute them to anyone in particular, other than just knowing that they're curated by a local librarian. Uh, what about like stats or anything? Do we care like if you're going to say, what can I pull out of the repository for cool browse categories or cool lists? Hey, this has been used by 10 different libraries, or this one's only been used by one library, is that relevant? And is it relevant to know, hey, of all of the libraries that have used this, here's how much patrons are actually using it. Yeah, I think there might be a utility in like the number of clicks, um, yeah. you know, on an item within a, within a browse category or, um, 
you know, a placard. Yeah, like seeing the usage stats on a given list would definitely be useful. So yeah, this this one is wildly popular and this one no one cares about. So yeah. I think that gives us some good ideas to flesh some of this out. Are there any other points anyone wants to make or things they want to make sure we make prioritize on this? I think from from Arlington standpoint, the translation, like a repository of shared translation would probably be the most useful. That's probably the hardest one, at least for us to do by ourselves, because all the other, you know, we can already do group works pretty easily and let generate lists and browse categories. There's no real barriers to doing those things, but the translation seems like it's the hardest one and probably benefit most from like a crowdsourced approach. I agree. And so it might be that the translation work, um, we work on more getting like, you know, so with browse categories and placards, it's more like, hey, you know, creative little experiment here. And, you know, we'll take some pieces of this and make our own version of it. Whereas we want a more canonical, like most everybody swallows most of the translation most of the time, um, you know, with the local variants that, uh, you know, that are more about policy than they are about um, flavor or creative flair. Yeah, like work towards like sort of one canonical Spanish translation of the default Aspen mm -hmm. terminology and then a Korean default you know, canonical, and then people can do their own local variants from there. But yeah, having one generally agreed upon generic one would probably be the yeah, first priority. All right, well, I'm sorry, were you getting ready to say something, Danielle? I was just gonna say that this reminds me of, um, of OCLC, where you can see which library originated the record, and then you can take, you can see how many libraries are using it, and then you can take it and augment that record. So I think that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, I agree. And then what are all the bad things about OCLC? <laughs> Don't get a cataloger started on OCLC. Don't, <laughs> don't go there. Well, I think we can continue this conversation in the following meetings, um, but we are almost to the halfway mark. So unless anyone has anything else they wanna make sure to say, we can move on. Um, so the next topic, I know at least one person here is very interested in. <laughs> um, what does everyone feel about separating grouped works based on the 245 subfield P? Pros and cons, you love it, you hate it. Hi, um, can you hear me? Scott yeah. from the Swan Consortium. I think this one is my fault. So. Um, yeah, basically the, this, the situation came from a series of, for us, it was a bunch of knitting DVDs that um, are all, there's like 25 of them, I want to say, um, and they're all grouped together, um, and they all have a different subfield P with some sort of bizarre title, 2500 series, 2000 series, it's not important, but the fact remains that it was, um, it's hard to navigate, and so the situation isn't necessarily that the solution is to separate them and this is, I mean, Mark actually brought this up, that the solution might also be to just sort of cast, a, bring to the fore what you're looking at. I mean, so there's the hold button at the top where you can place a hold and it's going to fall on some one of those items. And so you don't really know what you're going to get if you were to use that. Um, but you also don't have visibility into which volume you're looking at, which part you're looking at. So is the answer to separate or is the answer to change the interface in some way to show you what you're looking at and making very clear through the hold buttons what what you, will be happening when you use them. So that was the, the thing. 
I know that a couple of the uh, librarians in my consortium, the catalogers in my consortium have, have opted towards the um, separate side of things. They know that the discussion is happening. So they've said, oh, I think they should be separate, but I mean, that doesn't mean that's, that means too much. I mean, that's two or three people, but two or three very good catalogers, so. And we, we wanted to raise it with everybody because it would affect everybody's records. So if you're using the 245P for something else where they would definitely, you would still want them on the same work, um, then we wouldn't want to break things for other people. Is that something that could be like a toggle switch rather than a universal change? The nice thing with record group, so as we talk about like sharing uh, lists and that kind of thing, um, because the way it works now is across all of your systems, the grouped work ID is the same. So if you go to any title, so Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone has the same grouped work ID on every single person's um, system, which makes it really easy then to share like lists of things created from grouped works. So if we let, if some people did it and some people didn't, we would have to adjust for that later. Um, doesn't mean we can't do that, but it would make it a little dicier. Um, and if, if like essentially treating them as volumes, we could do something like that, um, where they're either grouped together or like we do with um, different languages where it's, you can see here's the Spanish version, here's the English edition. So it's still all the same grouped work, but we show it as different entries um, that are all surfaced at the same time. anyone have strong opinions one way or the other <laughs> i have a bunch of unknowns with like our ils cataloging practice my assumption you know my basic assumption is that um we use the part numbers for different things in different cases and that we have you know a multi-decade history that describes things differently and it's not very consistent uh and that you know if we were still in the world where hoopla supplied uh, mark, which we aren't, but you know, that they're, you know, the mark that they generate for their part numbers and enumeration are also like all wacky. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I imagine that, you know, we, we do a lot of side load stuff in Nashville and, you know, the, the sub P and the sub M's that we get from the vendors are, you know, in, can, inconsistent within themselves and across. Um, so I don't know. I'm also inclined to think that even if, you know, the cataloging were perfectly consistent across the board all the time, even based on the materials that you have in your hand, sometimes one would be more, one solution would be more intuitive on the other, just based on the nature of the materials. So, I mean, there's no, I don't think there's going to be a perfect solution. It's just we got to sort of aim in the right direction and sort of let it land and call it a yeah, And so for me, the things that I automatically go to thinking about this are comic book series and mm. um, DVD television series, um, you know, discs within seasons, uh, within series. And uh, yeah, I know that we are inconsistent locally. <laughs> That's all I know. So maybe what's the better end result for the patron? Ideally, if we look at like, yeah, a series of, knit, of knitting DVDs or the Archie comics, do we, would we rather see them all together or would we rather see them apart? Um, assuming it's obvious that you can place a hold on the correct thing. Would they show up in the, when you expand the, you know, show me all the items as now, do they show up right there for the, the library that's seeing this issue or, or is part of the problem? They show up like you. They obviously. I mean, they you, they are separate entries, but there's no way to see which is which. You know, there's no that P isn't that data in the P isn't being displayed anywhere. Right. Um, and also with the hold buttons, so that's they're there, but they're not obvious. And so, would so, one solution to be show more information in the expanded edition table? You know, where right now it might show um, 
uh, like the publisher name and the number of pages or something like that. Um, but to include the the P sub P sub N. Yeah, yeah. the real estate's tight in there. And the other, but the other solution is that like the other thing to consider is like are patrons expanding that? And if not, they're kind of relying on that blanket hold button. You know, I don't know how often people click around so much, so. Well, and to that, you know, that's one of those, um, you, you know, what I, you know, Aspen I think is about, when I, when I think about those, that is a usability question, right? How, how, uh, how are we gonna save the time of the reader in this situation um, to get them the thing that they really think that they want? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that generally I consider like the casual reader, um, you know, for grouped works. Um, and that's great for monographs. I think that it works really well for monographs, but not so good for these kinds of things where the casual reader might want to start with number one and then move sequentially through. Um, I do think that the learning curve is pretty low. Like once you end up getting the wrong thing and have the conversation of how do I get the right thing? Um, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, I'm done. I'm done talking. That was plenty <laughs> of um, thinking from my point of view. Yeah. The other sort of possible friction point you can think of for this is that, I mean, if you were to combine them, keep them together, you would have like, why is my Harry Potter series seven different entries, but my, you know, Spider-Man comic all grouped up into one? Would the patron intuitively make the, the distinction between those two types of series what are essentially kind of the same concept. So, I mean, that's sort of an argument for separating. The more I think about it, the more I lean on the separating side. Um, and I know like people comment, uh, people catalog comic books both ways, so. Um, from a development standpoint, it is easiest to say, let's revise the display once they are grouped to make it more obvious that those part numbers are there and increase the holds or, in, or make the hold buttons more obvious. Um, I guess the other thing from a performance standpoint is if all of a sudden we have like a hundred different Spider-Man comics all, all grouped together, like it just takes a long time to display that. So um, development wise, it's fastest to, to go through and make those more visible. We could do that, see what we think. And then if we don't like that, we could separate them out. Um, but I'm also happy to just separate them out too if we don't think it's gonna have unintended side effects. And we could also say, everybody do some homework and try to figure out what all you're using your part numbers for and do it one way, and then if if we don't like the way that looks, do it the other way. I mean, I like that plan. Okay. <laughs> make, make it look better now, and, and everybody do some digging to see what part numbers you have, and we'll yeah. see how those look. Seems like a very rational approach to this. I'm all about making my life easy, too. So, <laughs> um, but, and get the patrons what they want. Um, okay, so let me work on that display and, and see if we can make those look better. So, um, anything else anybody wants to talk about on that? Or? Could you send out a quick, like a, a quick little email summary of what? We just discussed here like none of my cataloging people are present today and i'm not really competent to represent their opinions on this i have no idea what their feelings are so just to like summarize what we talked about so they can weigh in if they feel they need to yeah for sure um we are current we've currently been putting the meeting notes back into the um gather in the gathering blog posts but i think we could probably include okay. a summary as well um, yeah, actually, that's fine. I mean, if I can just point to that and just say, hey, pay attention to this. And if you have any opinions, send them, send them on in. Yeah, of course. That, that um, should be sufficient. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. 
Um, okay, so our next topic. Um, so we wanted to talk to you a little bit, bit about the um, Aspen Weekly. Um, we, a couple different aspects of this. We're wondering if you like the content we've been pushing out, um, what you do like, what you don't like, what you wanna see more of. And then also we would love to get some community involvement and maybe every couple ones have a partner, one of y'all, um, right? On topics of your choice uh, about Aspen. So what do y'all think of it? Would you be willing to participate in them? Um, I dropped the links in the chat too, if you don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, Gal. I, I find it valuable and I'd be glad to help out. Perfect. All right, I'm writing your name down. Oh. <laughs> Cal will reach out to you. I will reach out to you. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're useful. I mean, some of them I pay attention to when they're topics that I'm interested in, and some of them I just kind of, you know, let go by the wayside, thinking that if I want to, I can always go back and reference them later. So, but I definitely think it's worth something worth doing. Are there topics people would like to see covered in the future, or is it kind of a finding out about? things you didn't know existed, the value. Yeah, for me, it's the latter, just finding out something, oh, I didn't know I needed to know that, or that's something that might be useful, you know, at some point. And I've also had the experience where the, uh, the, the newsletter reminded me of something that I had been taught before, but hadn't yet heard three times, so it hadn't really sunk in like the, you know, the, um, the blank uh, trigger word for placards. It's just like, oh yeah, that's how I do it. That's how I do it. Did everybody the thing that the I would like to see is just the cool ways, you know, you know, I'm not always going over to Arlington's site. I'm not always going over to Uinta's site. And, you know, to have uh, a spotlight on, you know, the things that surprise Addie and Emily and Mark when <laughs> they're like, you did what? <laughs> Yeah, I think Mark was about to mention, do y'all, does everyone know that the Aspen Weekly is a thing? Do y'all know what we're talking about? Are they reaching you? <laughs> See some thumbs. Yeah, they're definitely reaching us. I think one of my colleagues brought one of them to my attention about the, I think it was the translations one to make me pay more attention to that. So I know they're being read on our end. Good. Good. I get them and I, I read them. Um, is there a spot somewhere on Bywater's website where it has like the archive of them all in one location? I'm, somehow I've missed that. Anyway, if you could put that link out. Yeah, the most recent chat that Cal um, put in the chat um, has all of them, uh, the Aspen-Weekly URL. Well, if y'all ever have topics that we aren't um, covering in them, you know, you can always throw it in the Slack channel um, and we can add it to our list. Our list is starting to run out. So we need to come up with some new ideas. <laughs> uh, I would suggest um, the, the tangential thing and this, um, you could put a link to the um, to the newsletter in the help section, you know, the, the help. Um, oh, good call. Right, of admin, as well as, and I'd seen, I think, Addy, I think you had done this um, on the demo site for some of the Aspen Bywater videos. Mm. Um, but, you know, I think that those are real useful to be linked, you know, in the same area that the help manual is linked. So I will say for the videos, all of those are in the manual on their corresponding pages. Um, would it, 
be useful to have them separated out or we found to just have them like where <laughs> the information all was um, made sense to us, but if, if you think differently. So I use uh, at this point in pandemic times, I use like tutorials and stuff as ambient video information, you know, so like when I'm riding my stationary bike downstairs, I just have that on. <laughs> you know not that i pay total attention to it but you know i occasionally pick up like oh oh someday i want to make the help file searchable but that's <laughs> one of a bunch of things um yeah and adding it the aspen weekly to the help would be super easy so That'd be really cool yeah, I think that's a good suggestion from James in the, in the uh, Aspen admin kind of main landing page on the Aspen discovery help section, including the link to um, the gathering archives and then the weekly newsletter, both would be good additions to that section. All right, well, um, so those were all of our does anyone else have anything else they wanted to add to the weekly conversation? Okay. Um, so I think next, um, Mark's going to talk a little bit about what's coming in 2101. Yeah, and we hadn't gone through 2018 before, but I guess, does anybody have any questions on things coming from 20.18 or have had a chance to check out new stats and graphs and that kind of thing? Um, so 21.01, I will paste a link to the current release notes into the chat. Um, this is as of today. There's obviously more things coming. Um, we, the plan is to push this around the 19th, um, which is next Tuesday. Um, so it would either be Tuesday night or Wednesday evening, uh, most likely, depending on how things go. Um, the kind of main uh, focus for this uh, release is just cleaning out our ticket backlog. Um, so the things in there are all things that are tickets from one of y'all um, or somebody else that's not on the call. Um, and I've talked with a lot of people as we've met, but basically the idea is um, we're gonna try to be a little more aggressive about making sure it's either fixed or on hold so that at the end of each release, the kind of open backlog is empty. Um, and then we'll pull things out at the beginning of each new release, just so that everybody has a little bit better idea of what's going on. Um, I can share the release notes like on screen if anybody wants to look at them. Um, kind of the big things though, um, more with volume holds, some collection spotlight updates. So for anybody doing the advanced um, things where we have multiple tabs, um, those are working now with the new list, the new collection spotlight style of horizontal carousel um, so that you can use them that way. Um, Let's see, volumes, it's doing a little bit more if you have a combination of volumes of records with volumes and without volumes. Um, can easily select all titles for renewals so that you can pick selected ones. Um, lots of, of little things with OverDrive and Access 360 and Cloud Library. Um, we've been having some issues with OverDrive. They've released a couple of developments that went through and, and deleted two thirds of people's collections. <laughs> um, we've been noticing not the same thing. So thankfully everybody has their full collections. It does seem to be slower lately though. So we're, we're looking at some performance improvements um, and also looking at uh, improvements and functionality so that people can have multiple uh, 
collections of overdrive. So um, if a consortium has multiple consortiums of overdrive materials or access 360 or cloud library um, so that all of those work well together um, and currently working on indexing those in parallel. Um, so if you have tickets, I think we've talked to a lot of people that are currently open that you prefer get fixed by next week, let us know. Um, or if you see something go on hold that is more urgent, let me know. Um, once we get 2101 done, um, some of the tentative goals for 2102, um, looking at some of the grouping and indexing updates. So there's several tickets um, talking about, hey, we should tweak this grouping thing or tweak this indexing thing. Um, one of the things a lot of people are interested in is more control over like audience facets. Um, so looking at all of those things, as well as some permissioning updates um, for libraries and locations. So um, for consortia that are delegating out administrative control for things like hours and uh, system messages, well, hours, addresses, that kind of thing to individual libraries, um, being able to just see those things and not all of the scary things. Um, we've had several requests for that. Um, and then hopefully start looking at some of the shared repositories to see, at least do some prototyping work. Um, are there other things people want to see sooner or does that sound like a, an okay thing to be concentrating on? Um, and obviously any any issues that come in from y'all will be digging into. I'm looking at the um the release notes for twenty one oh one and I see the the ability to select all for checked out titles. I know we've had in the past, maybe it was back in even back in PICA days, requests for similar functionality for on hold titles where you can multiple select and then do freezing, unfreezing, canceling on a bunch of titles at once. So that's probably, if that's, you know, that's something that I don't have an actual ticket in for, but I know people have requested that in the past. Yeah, uh, we have some, I think, for the renew selected. I'm not sure about the freeze thaw. Um, if you wanted to put one in. Can, yeah, I think we probably had one way, yeah. way back uh, I'm, in the ancient I'm, days. So I can I can reactivate one of those, re resurrect it. Yeah, I believe there is one in there. I, I'd have to check to see if there's one in there now that's active. Um, but I know okay. that's definitely something that has been talked about. Um, and then the trick is, a lot of the ILSs don't support it, so I just have to figure uh, out how to support it. And it's also the well, now more of the e-content providers do, but since we can display overdrive titles with physical titles, if you say renew all and overdrive doesn't allow renew, um, bad example, yeah, that's they do totally now, tricky. then yeah, then we just have to display the appropriate message. So, um, but more and more vendors are supporting everything that a traditional ILS does for physical materials. So, um, yeah. Um, and then any other questions on 2101 or 2102? What are the, um, what are the audience uh, tweaks that have been suggested? Um, I will probably not get them all right. <laughs> there have been um, requests to make it easier to rename those. Um, so like young adult changing those to teen can be very difficult because of how underlying it's done and Overdrive and RB Digital don't give us the same amount of detail. So being able to rename those, being able to deal with some of the unknowns um, and uncategorized that show up um, within a consortium, being able to 
have audiences re or controlled by the scope that you're in. So uh, we've got several partners that are doing audience based off like shelf location. So if we have two libraries within a consortium, my library might put a book on the young adult shelf and another library might put it on the juvenile shelf. So when I'm looking for it, I want to show up if it's young adult. So are the, the three big ones that I've recall off the top of my head. Um, so if there's no other questions on those, um, the other big thing that I wanted to say was we do have a developer position open. So if you know anybody looking for uh, wanting to do development work on Aspen, um, we're hiring that position is up. Um, somebody could drop a link into the chat. It's a race. It's <laughs> <gonna win. laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're posting that and hope to have that hired um, and started within a month or so. Um, but we're excited to do that. Keep uh, Aspen moving fa forward even faster. Um. So we have a few more minutes. Um. I wanted to talk about our action items. We've got some open time. And then this time we have time to talk about what we wanna talk about next month. So unless you guys want me to decide for you, <laughs> we should go ahead and decide what we wanna talk about. Is there something that's really burning at someone that we'd love to have the conversation with the community? I have some notes from like various conversations with y'all at different times. Um, so if y'all want to, I can share them. Um, I know that some of y'all have talked about wanting to see uh, people's special collections, maybe doing like a show and tell, um, maybe talking about different collection spotlights that we're doing, uh, talking about the new web builder functionality local history things. Um, yeah, that's what I have on my notes. What do y'all think about that or other ideas? Maybe it jogged your me memory. Yeah, I think I offered in a previous session to do a show and tell on the JavaScript snippets, which I've now implemented. So we can do that maybe next time if there's time. Yeah. I'd be interested in seeing more on the web builder. We're not making that available to our members yet to maintain our sanity. Um, <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I'm re we definitely want to. Um, once we get past the initial hump of migrating discovery platforms. So I'd be curious to see what people are doing. I know at least two partners are using the web builder really well. Um, so we can reach out to them and see if they're interested in sharing with us. Yeah, I'd be interested in seeing that. We haven't made any real, we haven't made any stabs at that yet, but we're interested. So we've got um, Arlington JavaScript placard um show and tell potentially web builder depending on the partner's response um what else are y'all interested in talking about cool i'll just random card another topic <laughs> I mean, I, I think the issue of um, linked accounts is worth revisiting. And we touched on this a little bit last week, um, you know, but it was like <laughs> kind of reiterated when I was talking to my partner. I was like, you know, hey, I linked our accounts and I can see all of your holds. 
and all of your checkouts when I log in. She's like, really? I didn't know that. And I mean, but then a real life scenario that was like way more toxic was brought up in the last meeting. So I, I just think, you know, how those work could be built out a little bit more for safety and security. So even if you have someone's pin number, I think maybe whenever that's turned on, that person should get an email that says, hey, this was turned on. And then also give also that other person the ability to turn it off. I, where this gets thorny, and I think we even talked about this, is with your kids. <laughs> um, um, but I think you probably could build that out too based on patron type. Um, I guess that's very easy for me to say, and it would depend on the ILS. So, Well, and some of that could be if my kid has the same email address as me, I don't need to notify myself. <laughs> if they've yeah. got a different email address than I do, then let them know. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great um, topic. And, and I think uh, even more broadly, you know, security, patron security, more writ more broadly, and you know, what are the ways that Aspen is already um, working to protect? patron privacy and what are the places that it needs improvement you know and so I think like you know some you know for the linked accounts I think one of the things would be just ensuring that the the audit trail um, in the system logs is is there perfect so if everyone's okay with it I've got javascript placard um, web builder linked account conversation and then also just patron security, where we are now and what can we do in the future? Is that good with everyone? And if, uh, it, you know, I, I don't know, this would be a consortial thing. So I've got another JavaScript snippet that I can share at the same time Jonathan does. Totally different topic, but for consortia that slice and dice their locations differently, you know, a way to quickly, quickly say, all right, Give me, you know, in my case, give me all the high schools, right? So click on one button, get, you know, the 18 high schools, click on a different button, get the 75 elementary schools together without having to go through. Da, 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 da. Perfect. Um, okay, so just really quickly, I've got some action items. Um, we're going to start the process as in Bywater the, um, of a server for the repositories. All of y'all need to talk with your catalogers and think about how separating out the 245P would affect um, you if we split them out. We are going to add the 245P information to the display to make it more obvious. Um, and then we're gonna add the Aspen Weekly Newsletter and potentially the, As the gathering archives to the Aspen help section. Um, before we run, I just wanted to mention if there's ever any desired content that you want from us that we are not providing, please let us know. Um, you can Slack us, you can email us, you can throw it in a ticket because um, we want to make sure we're sharing information and not just writing stuff for our own pleasure. <laughs> um, is there anything else that anyone wanted to talk about or mention? I know we're at the end. <laughs> Cool. Oh, Cal, do you want to mention the our the webinar that's coming up too? Sorry, I completely forgot. Yeah. yeah so, oh, uh, well, which one? So we have Open Source <laughs> Live, which is next. I can put the information in. Um, that might be the most um, relatable for everyone. Let's see. Let me just find the link to it first. I can't talk and do two things at once. So basically what it is, is Bywater wanted to um, put together kind of like a quarterly conversation um, for all of our different open source products and um, softwares that we use. Um, but it's, it's gonna be our first one. We're gonna be talking about um, kind of like just 2020 and libraries in general and challenges they overcame and then sort of like solutions um, that, um, you know, maybe they use their software to overcome or just other in general, just talking with different libraries. We have academic libraries being represented. Um, Sam Passy is gonna be speaking um, about public libraries. We're gonna have special libraries there. 
Um, we have like a law firm who's coming to, uh, someone from a law firm is coming to speak. So um, we just wanna get together and uh, as an open source community kind of, and just talk about different issues as you know, library staff that we were facing last year. Um, that's not gonna be the theme for all of them. There, it's gonna change. It just seemed very timely at the beginning of January to kind of like recap and then talk about where we're going um, in the next year. So I just put the link down there and maybe Addy could add it to the notes too. Yeah. And then there's the uh, one with information today, which is more of a, everybody here knows it, but if you wanna share it with colleagues, friends, family, that kind of thing. Yeah, let me get that one too. That's more for like, um, it's more like an introduction to Aspen. So, but yeah, like Mark said, if you know anyone that's not on Aspen and is curious, um, we have this webinar. I will add that also. There we go. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> sure. All right, y'all. Is there anything else that anyone wanted to address before we head out? Cool. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Have a good one. So long. <laughs>